All righty. Well, welcome to Caching in the Northwest. This is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. It's Thursday at 9 p.m. They call the normal host of this show, Chris of the Northwest. And we're going to talk about geocaches and geocaches from here and all around the globe. So while you're waiting for your BIOS update to finish, <laughs> we'll be caching in the Northwest. And tonight we're talking about the Route 66 Adventure Lab series with GSM times two. I'm glad you're here, Scott. Thanks for joining. I me. am terribly excited about <laughs> this. Thank you guys. Well, that's great because Land Monkey is excited and I'm just terrible. So we got it all covered. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, listeners, are you planning to get your kicks on Route 66? Give us your feedback. Stay tuned and find out all about it because I'm excited to learn about it. But first, of course, it's time to bring in our road trip tamarind. Some say he's actually an AI chatbot, and others say he can sniff out an earth cache like a truffled pig. All we know is he's called Land Monkey. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, I am an AI chatbot. It's all about giving me the right prompt. Then, this is true. Then you'll get what you want. Monkey GPT. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. All right. And uh, hey, speaking of sniffing out earth caches like a truffle pig, uh, unsolicited uh AI prompt from me is uh, go check out my YouTube channel tomorrow. New video coming out all about uh, sniffing out earth caches like a truffle pig. I don't know how you knew that that was exactly what the video was. I'm seismic. Yes, you are also handy for earth. Caches. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, before we get to any more of that stuff, uh, and really the important stuff is talking to Scott about the sales. But uh, oh my goodness. Oh my Can goodness. You hear? A surprise Can you hear me? How is your BIOS? Oh, it, it's very fresh and updated right now. <laughs> we had a, we had a new opening graphic here. It looked a lot like this. Yeah, that I, I saw that same thing. I was watching it live. <laughs> oh, Chris, we're glad you were able to make it. Despite <clears throat> the uh, your computer fighting against you every step of the way. Oh, oh boy, let me tell you. I can tell you a thing or two. Well, let's save that for the after show. But uh, <laughs> first, we want to uh, show our appreciation for all of our patrons who uh, help to fund Chris's computer fund and keep yeah. this podcast coming each and every week. Uh, thanks to uh, Land Sharks, L A N D S H A R K Z dot C A, one of our corporate sponsors. If you've seen anything on geocaching.com that you want to get, well, check and see if it's on Land Sharks. Uh, they are an official geocaching.com reseller. And hey, I would be remiss if I did not point out that Cashly is the premier geocaching app for iOS. Version 8 with Cashly Pro features offline maps of the entire world so you can navigate while offline, uh, even if your BIOS is rebooting. Delorme and counties so that you can finish those grids. And coming soon, CarPlay support with or without Dell BIOS. Find Cashly in the iOS app store or go to cashly.com. And folks, if you want to know more about supporting the show, and clearly we need all the support we can get, <laughs> click that Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. Thank you for your support. I, I feel uplifted. <laughs> we are your uh, we are your athletic supporters. Oh, good. So I did all of this trying to get a uh, voicemail to play. So tell me if you hear anything. Here we go. You can just nod your heads when you hear somebody else's voice. Hi, Caching in the Northwest. This is Megan, um, also known to the geocaching world, RFU for 88. Um, I was on a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about goals, and I announced that I was going to get um, have going caching 2024 as my 5,000, and I did it. Um, so I have five, well, over 5,000 now, and on my way to 6,000. And for my uh, photo, I got a picture with Brian Ross, so it made it extra special. Uh, I hope. I uh, can't wait to uh, get on tomorrow night and have a great day. Happy casting. That's there you awesome. go. Congratulations. Awesome. That was worth it. Yes. Yeah, that was worth rebooting your mm -hmm. computer. And I mean, I'm honestly, also on my way to everything 6, was left in good hands, Chris. So yes. Scott was here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm also on my way to 6,000. Mm -hmm. I'm on my way to like 2,200 first, but, you know, <laughs> eventually, 6,000 is out there. Yeah, that's a lot of fines. That's that's fantastic. Congratulations and and very much appreciate uh calling that in. That was that yes. was pretty cool. 
I appreciate the call-ins and, and I think Wits End appreciates it more because he didn't have to read it. <laughs> Indeed. I enjoy reading them, but I really enjoy hearing other people. Yeah, exactly. Right. You, it's different in, in tonations. So, so far, Megan wins the show. Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. Definitely not um, you, Chris. I was going to say, I don't have somebody bringing me beverages during the podcast. Like, so. <laughs> I, I prefetch mine. I, I, I put in an order earlier and I'm still waiting. <laughs> did you check? Yeah. Did you check your phone to see if it went through? Oh, no. Oh, I probably had to pay something. I'm not going to do yeah. that. Did, did you order at the wrong location? <laughs> probably. And <laughs> Megan's listening tonight. So congratulations Yay. on 5,000. You, you probably already passed 6,000 now. Probably so. And thanks for calling in. Indeed. How did she call Clearly, in, by the way? I appreciate it. <laughs> well, Sorry. the only way to call in is to call into 253-693-TFTC. That's right. Leave us a comment, ask us a question, or send us your feedback anytime in the day or night. And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. It's just not the same as your voice. Voices Unless you there. record that on that smartphone of yours, you know, that app that you have right there, you can record it and then email it right away, right from your phone, where you could be in the middle of Route 66 looking for a blue whale. <laughs> I feel like we're going somewhere with that. Hmm, definitely. It's one of, one of the locations. All right. I, I just thought it was interesting, a blue whale in Oklahoma. Isn't that a landlocked state? <laughs> That's why this whale is blue. If it Ever since the, the point, places, yeah. it'd oh, be yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Well, GSM times two. I don't think anybody listening to our podcast, you, you're new to them. I think they know you well. Uh, you've been around the caching community. You've made great um, uh, contributions to the caching community. Uh, so welcome back. You have been on an epic journey and yes. you, and you also are going towards a milestone towards uh, 6,000, right? Uh, actually oh. 6,000 times five. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. and thank you very much i am very very pleased to be here and sharing the exploits that uh my wife and i did to so that i could finish wow and she allowed you to not only allowed me to she came with me oh and, no way and, awesome. and she's a muggle but she does enjoy I... uh she does enjoy adventure labs and she does realize how important route 66 uh has been mm -hmm. to my contribution to uh geocaching well, why don't you tell us a little bit about that contribution to geocaching? Because it's not something that we can easily overlook. <laughs> it really isn't. It, well, you know, anytime I talk about Route 66 and my involvement in Route 66, I also ha always have to talk about uh, KC underscore 11. Because KC underscore 11 is the person who came up with the idea of linking uh, Adventure Labs together to create a series. His original idea was he had a couple of friends and they had an ALs that they didn't know what to do with. And he said, hey, let's link together some of the uh, Lincoln Highway in Illinois. And then some people in Iowa got a hint and some people in Indiana got uh, and said, we want to be involved. And then GCHQ got involved and they created uh, uh, the Lincoln Highway Adventure Lab series going all the way from New York to uh, to San Francisco. I was fortunate to get one of those sections in Utah, and uh, I went up 400 miles from my house, <laughs> went up, created it, and then on the way home, I was doing uh, I was doing parts of them, and mm -hmm. uh, and then when I got time to head home, I'm 300 miles from home, and I'm like. Scott, somebody should do this on Route 66. Someone should do this. 66. Scott, you should do this on Route 66. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, got involved with uh, with Gear Guru up in uh, GCHQ. Uh, found myself eight state coordinators. They did the bulk of the of the work of dividing the states up into sections, recruiting reliable and task oriented uh, geocachers, and in four months. We had the Route 60, historic Route 66 Adventure Lab series going all the way from Chicago to Santa Monica. Is it, isn't it quite a thing when the voice in your head knows your name? <laughs> it, it's it, just, you know, <laughs> hey, you, you could ignore it, right? Right. 
Yeah. If, if it had stayed someone, I wouldn't have done it. But uh, <laughs> and, and I don't know that I, I should have a legacy. Uh, but if I did, this would be the geocaching legacy I would hope to have. It was a blast. Well, it sounds like it. That's And it's quite a significant milestone to hit 30,000 finds. Uh, and, you know, it sounds like you put a lot. I'm also on the way to my 30,000th find, by the way. As am I. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, but it seems like getting all the stars to align, all the planets to align, and getting all those numbers to add up to make that just coordinate just the way you wanted it to that takes a lot of planning. That doesn't just happen. He's like, oh, oh, look at that, it just happened to be this, you know. Um, can you share a little bit of your planning process so that you were uh, sure to hit that milestone just when you planned it to be there? I can and then I'll share some time of my little mistake on doing that. <laughs> it was a bonus. Uh, well, that's my it, job. It was a bonus, absolutely. So I had done all of the uh, California uh, Adventure Labs, um, and then uh, uh, in May, when Geo Woodstock was going to be in Flagstaff, I'm like, okay, I can do you know a couple a couple more up to Flagstaff, and I can do one in Flagstaff. Uh, Fu Manju, one of the organizers, actually had one of the uh, Route 66 Adventure Labs in Flagstaff. Oh, maybe I could do a couple more after that. And uh, and then I just, somebody said, somebody should just do the whole dang thing. <laughs> oh, Scott, you should do the whole dang thing. So contact, you know, talk to my wife, uh, came up with an idea of how I could do it uh, in an economic way. And, uh, and I set out in May to... Uh, to do the whole thing had a great plan and was you know going to do 60 locations a day that seemed uh, reasonable uh, and then and then it just fell apart <laughs> it fell apart because the first day out of flagstaff uh at the end of the day i'd done 50. so i'm now 10 locations behind one adventure behind and i'm like okay how do i catch up and i don't catch up i'm just going to I want to experience, not just mm. the number. Mm. And uh, and so that's what I did. I slowed down and uh, came up with a plan. I knew that on a certain date, I had an event already scheduled in St. Louis because I have a niece and nephew who geocache and I like, you know, we're going to have an event there. So my plan was do as many as I could. And uh, when I was half away, half a day away from St. Louis, stop, get on the, get on the interstate and go to St. Louis. And so I wound up with a gap of uh, 86 from from uh, the Southern, Cal Southern Kansas border to close to St. Louis. There was a gap and I'll complete that someday. And then uh, my wife and I had us a discussion and, and said, hey, let's go out and get in those other uh, 80, 96 uh, or 86 uh, adventures. And that's that's what we said to do. And I'm excited to talk about that, about that. Wow. Okay. I, I, uh, oh, and you asked about planning for it. <laughs> I guess I probably should mention that. So, I, yeah, so I, you know, lined it all up so I would have, you know, room to do those. I knew that I was going to do an event. I knew that I was going to get one bonus cash. So I made up a plan of these are 40 some we're going to get on day one, and these are the 40 some we're going to get on day 10. And uh, use G, GSAC and, uh, uh, labs to GPX and created a GPX file and made up my plan. And then, <laughs> and then day one hit. Yeah. Uh, actually day one minus two, I was <laughs> just kind of fiddling around looking at something or another and, and like, how come there's only four locations on that one adventure lab there in Oklahoma? <sighs> and I missed six. Oh, and wow. fortunately, and I had already lined up everything. And fortunately, they were the six closest to the Kansas border. So I just needed to add those six on. And uh, and and then we went ahead. And it was a little rush to do it, but uh, mm -hmm. we, got, we, got, we got it done. Were all the Adventure Labs along <laughs> Route 66 10 stops? Not all of them are 10 okay. stops. Um, some people, we wanted interesting locations. You know, there are parts yeah. of this country that, for 30, you know, for 36 miles, it's not 10 interesting things on Route 66. <laughs> uh, we had a couple people who uh, had previously made Route 66 uh, adventures as five location adventures 
we invited them to join our group and uh you know and so those five were five okay yeah okay well congratulations on the achievement scott that's uh pretty remarkable as we've mm-hmm. discussed um with that many fines or 30,000 fines well 30,000 plus i'm sure by now under your belt um what would be some advice that you'd give to <clears throat> other geocachers who are newer to the game and perhaps look at a number like 30,000 in awe yeah you know it's really funny because when i first got in the game uh my dad said how do those people have a thousand and i'm like i have no clue how they have a thousand (laughs) but to new people coming in the game and this is a little i thought about this for a while so this is a little long answer it's a great time to enter the game you know if you're interested in numbers there's power trails out there there's geo art out there uh, there's geo art with adventure labs out there where you can get a lot of numbers very very um so good time to pick up numbers and on the other hand if you're quality over quantity uh this is a great time to get into the game you know we have you know a lot of geocachers have followed west tim's uh role model of creating good geocaches uh there are now some really interesting gadget caches um with this movement uh, to refresh the game board to take some of those stale uh, geocaches that have been out there no, getting no favorite points. Uh, arch- if they go missing, archive them and put out something at least a little bit better. And, or it might be a case of just archive them and put out something better. And then also uh, with uh, Geocaching HQ, they're pushing a lot of maintenance and, uh, you know, geocaching the game board is getting better and more interest um, if you're a social person like i am uh, this is a great time to get into the game because there's more and more events going on uh, with the 25th anniversary coming up with block parties there's going to be a lot of the large events coming on and uh, mm-hmm. you know and that should be little interest but the i the number one and number two way to get those numbers is to stay in the game a long time. And to do that, um, my two pieces of advice are, there's many, many aspects of the game. Laugh onto the aspects of the game that you like and enjoy and do those. And to stay in the game for decades, uh, if one of, if those start getting stale, find some, some other aspect that yeah. you're interested in and keep yourself in. My dad, my dad was, <laughs> he was a jogger. He started jogging when he was 32 and he jogged until he was in his eighties. And uh, every day he would write down the, where, how far he ran, where he ran, what his time was, what he weighed. And, uh, and every new year's day, he'd sit and watch the football games and, accumulate, and uh, you know, compile those stats. And he would say, if you do something long enough, you will eventually attain big numbers yeah the keats 94 says the numbers add up yes mm-hmm. they do so yeah so that's that's how to get the numbers do it a long time and have fun doing it and have fun i think is the important aspect yeah. <laughs> absolutely There's so many aspects to this find one that you like yeah yeah absolutely. and you mentioned a lot of them block parties events you know just so many cool things gadget caches i think i haven't met anybody yet that doesn't like gadgets just, they're just cool yep so there's some fun things to do out there, but we're here tonight to talk about the Route 66 series. So let's jump right into that with as much detail as we can fit in an hour. All right. Thank you. With Scott yakking away for five minutes after every question. So so basically I talked about already KC-11 and, the, and Lincoln Highway. Uh, when we were done, we had created 194 locations. Um, 89 adventure along the 2448 miles of uh, route 66 two of those uh adventures the people archived them they uh they didn't live near them they were having difficulty with them um and then one of them was from flat from uh two guns to flagstaff <laughs> two guns to flagstaff 30 miles right next to flagstaff where they're going to have geo woodstock and i'm like that we can't have that not there so uh so i had an account that i was able to uh, get a five stage credit it was a six stage adventure and i just recreated that uh uh for just recreated it so right now we have uh 188 locations on route very cool 
That yeah. is amazing. Now I know I did a couple <clears throat> of them around Flagstaff. Oh, nice. And they were very well done. I enjoyed them. Uh, my wife was with me, and uh, you know she's not so much into geocaching, but she does like the adventure labs. I think it it's got a, a more universal appeal. Mm-hmm. It, it you know it's it's kind of the gateway drug into geocaching, I believe. Right. <laughs> That's what Gear Guru has referred yeah. to it as. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> um, but but yeah, she enjoys it because you know you can you walk up, you discover something, you put in an answer, and then you're done. You you know, and and they could be easier to find than perhaps a, a yeah. well hidden geocache, right? Um, but we did some of those along Route 66, learned some of the history, and it was fantastic. I love history. Mm-hmm. Right. Came up to some of these sites. Um, now you. We did the one, I remember the one with two arrows, not two guns, but two arrows. Yes. <laughs> in the ground. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's one left. Uh, it was just, uh, but yeah, those, those stick out in my mind. Um, so how many people have done at least some part of this Route 66? A, a lot of people, a lot of people have done some part of it. I have no idea. Certainly with uh, Geo Woodstock there, mm-hmm. uh, 1400 or however many people that they finally had a lot of people did mm-hmm. a lot of people did at least the one in flagstaff um as far as i can tell about 35 accounts have finished all of uh, wow. tw lar mm-hmm. um up up in your area mm-hmm. uh, was the first one to do it and that was really fun because I was able to meet her. I was putting on a GIF event and uh, she kind of altered her plans a little bit to arrive at my GIF event. And we were able to together do the last, it wasn't her last one, but it was the last one uh, for, to Santa Monica and uh, together. So that was really, really a treat. Um, I have made the effort to go down and uh, as I know people are doing it, if I can, I'll go down and meet them at the end. So have had you know, like I said, I think about 35 people have done the entire thing. You know, when you think about it, that's really amazing. Yeah. You know, they've driven the, well, I, I, I think you would have driven the entire 2,448 miles to do that. Uh, even more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to circle back and, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're going to do it by yourself and you get lost here and there and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and 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 some of the locations are not on Route 66. You know, when we mm-hmm. were making up the standard, it was hey, try and stay within two miles of Route 66. But if there is something of very interest, such as the first oil well mm-hmm. uh, drilled in Oklahoma, yeah, okay, that's about four and a half miles from Route 66. Still worth the effort. It needed to be added. Impressive. Yes. So yeah. you say about 35 geocaching accounts have done every location on the, uh, yep. 24, 48 miles and 188 locations is like 13 miles between locations on average. Some are sh- closer, I'm sure. But that, of those yeah. 35, yeah. oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah, it, it, actually, the average uh, adventure is about 32 miles, which makes it 3.2 miles between locations. That's good. That's so, way more. Yeah. Sounds more way more achievable. <laughs> and uh, yeah, d- do not call it a power trail, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Because, you know, because this actually interests me. Power trails don't. Yes. Um, of those 35 accounts, you added your name to that uh, illustrious list this week, didn't you? Tell I did. I did. So uh, so I got to add my list to it. Uh, like I said, I had done all of the ones in California. And then I went to do all the all of them. And uh and that actually that discussion of that is available on several other uh podcasts if you want to know about that but uh yeah i went ahead and did all of them i had the 91 to do and uh here last week actually my wife and i uh set out and uh and in over two days uh did the did those 91 and was a little bit rushed i wish we had had at least one maybe even two days uh mm-hmm. to finish them all but uh but got to got to do them all and got to add my add it to my list and uh the original plan was my 30,000th find my milestone 30,000 would be the last adventure lab uh on that um did not want to not do the six in Oklahoma so my 30,000th yeah. and six was the last one 
<laughs> and you know, all milestones are milestones. It's the first time that you've ever done that number of mm -hmm. lines. Yep. So they're all yep. milestones. Exactly. Yes. And uh, yeah, just a blast. Um, let's see. I kind of kind of look over my notes here a little bit. Well, okay. So <clears throat> tell us about the trip. Um, uh, it, I, I assume this is the major, the the long trip, right? When you left Geo Woodstock, yeah. Going up. Let me, yeah. Let me. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the trip in May. So the trip in May to make it economical, I rented a camper van uh, so that my car and my nightly stay would be one expense, and I just went ahead and uh, went to flag started to Flagstaff, and then changed my mind and said, I'm not going to try and do all of these. Um, I'm just going to leave that little gap. And I'm really glad I did. Uh, it just made the experience so much better. Um, probably the one that I will talk about here is going to the Oklahoma City Bombing Memorial. Uh, mm. One of the locations on Route 66 was a church across from that. And he referenced that there is a very good adventure lab in the Oklahoma City Bombing Memorial. And I've spent about an hour and a half there. <laughs> and uh, because it was it was fascinating because not only did they honor those people who had died in a very interesting way, uh, they had chairs set up with their names. Uh, and this row was on the first floor, this row was on the second floor, this mm -hmm. row was on the third floor. And so they honored all of those, all of those people. They had a wall uh, that survived. The, the building was built on a hill. So one of the walls was actually against, you know, against soil. So that one was not destroyed. They left that up and they have engraved all the survivors who were there because, you know, the survivors did not just walk out of there. Right. They, yeah. 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 They suffered also. And uh, and then they had another little section to all the people who were otherwise affected, all the first responders, all the family members, mm -hmm. all those all those people. And then they had a section uh, that's dedicated to children. And uh, and then one of the more interesting ones, I think the most interesting, when they originally were building the memorial, they put a chain link fence around it, you know, like it, you would do with any construction site. And uh, and over the over time, people would be hanging up things, hanging up teddy bears, hanging up um, notes, hanging up cards, hanging up whatever. <clears throat> and all of those things got categorized and put in a museum. Well, after they built the memorial, they went ahead and left four sections of that chain link or put mm. four sections of that chain link fence back up. And here, you, decades later, people are still hanging things on that on that chain link fence. So that's that's the best example of Mm -hmm. taking the time, not just doing it for the numbers. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Experience wow. trumps numbers every time the chat says. Yeah. <laughs> for, for some people it does. Yeah. And, and some people it's the numbers. Subway yeah. Mark says he spent a lot of time at the Oklahoma city Memorial. It was yeah. very moving. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I ham asks, is there a specific naming convention for these adventure labs? Yes. There is, <laughs> and now all I have to do is think about it. Okay. <laughs> so yes, that's that's all you need to know. You can you can you answered the question. Yeah. <laughs> it's called um, I put, uh, it's close to Route sixty six A A L, and then uh, it's the two locations: the northernmost mm -hmm. city and the southernmost city. So you know, Chicago to Joliet, for example, okay. would be one of them. Um, if the chat like you, I put a link in the show notes. Uh, yeah, maybe I didn't. Um, I'll I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get something put into this into the. I'll put a link in and okay. in just a second that shows all of them. So Scott, I mean, the Route 66 is is definitely, as far as I understand, known as one of those old classic highways that in that time when people were traveling, it was known for the roadside attractions. There was all kinds of things people would put, uh, you know, the, the largest ball of twine, ball of paint and all that kind of crazy stuff. That That's where you would see a lot of this kind of stuff. Did Were there some of those kinds of places to stop at? There, there were some of those places to stop at, but I think they, I mean, we, my wife and I stopped at, uh, at the the second largest uh, rocking chair 
<laughs> There's a lot of Michelin men uh, still mm -hmm. there. Uh, they're not Michelin men anymore, but uh, you know, but there, there's still a lot of Michelin men uh, on Route Six. Uh, but I, you know, as the hotels have gone out of business mm -hmm. or whatever they were attracting, uh, some of those landmarks have gone uh, mm -hmm. gone out too. And the world's yeah. second largest rocking chair. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any Burma shave signs along Route 66? Uh, not very many. Okay. Uh, not very many, but there, yeah, there used to be. And uh, yeah. Things like the Cadillac Ranch. Cadillac Ranch is still, yep. still there. Okay. Yeah. And then to answer the question directly, it's called Route 66, Historic Route 66, colon, space, and then the, nor the east or mm -hmm. northern uh, city, and okay. then the, to, to the southern city. Yeah, uh, I have found it. Historic Route 66 colon X to Y. Yep, yep. So, yeah, thanks for asking. And and, and they all have the same graphics, so they're actually fairly easy to find. Uh, oh, good. If you Well, that Bell on the Move asked a question about the graphic. Is there a way to get that uh, numbered T-shirts, 1 to 35? Yeah, thanks for asking. There, There is. Uh, we have a website. Uh, thanks to one of the people who had completed it. Um, and I forget his name. It's Tom. Um, he created it. And we do have, uh, if you go to uh, <laughs> Route 66, a uh, Route, uh, dang, Route 66, one second. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's there you go. Easy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wits End. Yeah, Route66AL.net. Um, that has a lot of information. It has the GPX files. It should have a link to our to our where you can order the T-shirt. This was a uh, fellow podcaster Scott Burks uh, created this design, nice. and his wife Shorty Nitz was actually my Illinois uh, state coordinator. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so you met the uh, oh god. There, oh, Brian Lang says there were several Burma shave signs between Kingman and Seligman, Arizona, or something. Yes. Yeah. There, there were a couple of them still out. Well, newer ones. I don't think they were the original ones. Probably not the originals, yeah. <laughs> but for somebody who's, uh, let's say, younger than uh, some of the people in this room, uh, was then, why don't you tell them what a boomer <laughs> Well, I, they were before my time, but uh, <laughs> my, my parents, my mom was born in Kansas uh -huh. and moved out to California. I don't know when, long before I was born, and talked about. So I'm, they they probably drove parts of Route 66 going to Los Angeles back in the day. Yep. And yeah, there was a Burma, there was a company that made shaving cream, the Burma Shave Company, and they made uh, signs that they would stage along the, uh, the highway in limerick style or poetic style, where they were just a, a short phrase, you know, a man, a miss, a kiss, a curve. He kissed the miss. And missed the curve, Burma <laughs> shave. Oh. oh man, that was perfect. <laughs> uh, so they were just—they were known for humorous that way, and and a lot of people that did road trips back in the day, you know, they didn't have podcasts to listen to, they didn't have DVD players in the back seat. That was the entertainment. You looked for the Burma shave signs and read the poems along the road. So. Yep, I was I was in the back seat at probably about eight to twelve years old, uh, and we mm -hmm. liked the Burma shave signs. Yeah. Uh, between DVDs, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> between looking for the ends in the next license plate or yeah. sign, yes. The alphabet <laughs> game, yeah. I played the alphabet game a lot on race. Yeah, I, I always had to sit in the middle on the back seat on the hump right there. On, on the, the transmission hump. hump. <laughs> no foot rest, no, no. foot room at all, yeah. I was the youngest, and it was, you know, that was my spot. Yep. <sighs> yeah. I so. never win at the license plate game because, you know, I wasn't closest to the window to see them. Right. Yep. Just wasn't fair. Yeah. We had, I don't we know had... why I was competitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah, so that was go ahead. I was gonna say for all of the, the highlights and tourist attractions and things that you did see along the road, did you have any specific highlights that, that stand out? You know, this last little trip uh with my wife, and again, we were we were unfortunately rushed. Uh we really enjoyed going to some different places. Uh there were a lot of people who it would love to talk about, you know, uh, met met the inspiration for Mater from uh, 
from uh, cars Uh and uh, you know and he was very interesting very fun to talk to Um, if we had all the time that we could have we would have spent a lot more time we probably would have arrived at the end of the trip without ears but uh, you know (laughs) but yeah but that was interesting Um, I think just for the the one one highlight I'll talk about the uh, independent Trails of Memorial uh, that an artist put together on his own land, no funding involved. And, uh, you know, Trails of Tears, for those who may not know, was when they relocated uh, many several tribes. They walked them from Missouri and Illinois to Oklahoma to their new reservation. And, and there were a lot of deaths along the way. So that's the Trails of Tears. And he had set up a very interesting, very beautiful memorial uh, that we would have spent an hour or more at. Uh, we probably spent about 20 minutes at. And uh, yeah, that was that was one of the highlights. And there's many, 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 many. many. Wow. So yeah, lots of uh, fascinating things that, that you mm-hmm. came across. So yeah. if someone, Scott, if someone's got their curiosity peak now and maybe they hadn't heard of this series before now they've heard about it and uh they're thinking about uh okay starting to plan tackling the series themselves where can they get more information about the historic route 66 al series okay now that we're at where uh where we're at the show notes where i can look and say uh route 60 route 66 al.net is our website over there we'll have general information we'll have the spreadsheet with all the links in it uh and uh there's a map there uh there are links to there's the gpx files the gpx files uh can be downloaded into uh into your apps into the many apps that will take gpx files um or put onto you know put onto a newbie or any kind of gps uh so those are there uh, there are links to the previous podcasts. I've had the good fortune of being on several different podcasts uh, talking about how it was planned and then my first trip on on Route 66. And then this is the one where I'm talking about having finally finished it. So all those podcast links will be on there. Um, and then we also have a Facebook group, uh, Route 66 GC Adventures is a facebook group that we have about 400 members on there and uh yeah so lots of good information and um you know a lot of the good resources um you will ask me in a little bit but i'll tell you now if you have any questions uh go ahead and contact me through the gchq um message board gsm x2 pronounced gsm times um and i'll be happy to provide any information that i can Nice. Hey, jumping back for just a moment, I ham yeah. must know, was the Trail of Tears the one in Rubido Springs in Waynesville, uh, Missouri? Um, I believe it was. In, it was in Missouri. Yes. And I assume that's French. Uh, well, Rubido Springs, um, that, no, that was, that was a one put on by the city or, or okay. a, 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 it's in a park. But this one was just off the side of the road. Uh, most people probably would never notice it unless they were on Route to Six, and unless they were following this location. Okay. So, so I asked you earlier before we started, but I'll ask again for the podcast. Can you really get a feel for what Route sixty six was really like back in the day, <sighs> or has it just all been paved over and so commercialized that it's it's just eh, it's it's not really the same. Okay, as far as the road, uh, it's 85% of Route 66 is still drivable as Route 66. Okay, that's a lot. It it will vary from nicely paved roads. Uh, There's a section just before Flagstaff that is dirt. (laughs) (laughs) uh, I think the more interesting, for me, the most fun was when Route 66 was right next to the interstate. Uh, there's a section of that in Southern California. A lot of the section in Illinois is like that. A number of sections in Missouri are like that, where you're driving down a two-lane road and you're right next to the interstate. And this the contrast is mm. so spectacular and fun because you're seeing all the trucks and all the cars and yeah. and you're just driving on a road that's essentially a frontage road. So I really enjoyed that section. Um, 
in Illinois, Illinois, there's a couple of states that's really done a good job of maintaining, you know, G6, making it easy to follow. Um, Illinois is one of them. Missouri is one of them. Oklahoma, another one. And in Illinois, it was interesting because as Route 66 became more crowded, they had to expand it. So there's many, as much of the sections in Illinois uh, were two lane divided highways or four lane divided highways, not not limited access, but uh, four lanes, which was really unusual. Now that's being used as a frontage road. Um, they've closed down one of them and that's being taken over by nature. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then the others you're, you're driving along. (coughs) I kind of feel like I wish I could get a 1950s sedan and drive it. Convertible. Yeah. Convertible. It would have been fun, you know, and there's, well, and then the other part of it is, but you also get a feeling for what it was. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of abandoned gas stations and there's a lot of abandoned motels. But on the other hand, it is sparking up. They are, uh, we're coming up to the 100th anniversary of Route 66. Hmm. And, uh, and some of those gas stations are being turned into, you know, into tourist attractions, into hmm. roadside attractions. Man, some of the motels are coming back. Some of them have been, some of them have been converted to uh, housing, to apartments, mm-hmm. but others are are still uh, as motels. And you know, and I would really encourage those people who are doing it. And I have nothing against the Hyatt, and I have nothing against Holiday Inn, and or any of those. But if you can stay at those old ones uh yeah. you're going to find the rates are competitive if mm-hmm. not really good and and these people are trying to keep route 66 like mm-hmm. route 66 so uh yeah and i i stayed in a couple and you know and yeah they're they're not 80 some years old and they're not the fanciest places but they were really really had a, a nice feel to them but i would also do my research because some of them are kept up well and some of them <clears throat> are not. <laughs> I saw a TV special not long ago for uh, abandoned places or something. I forget. That, but they talked about Roy's Motel and Cafe in uh, Amboy, California yes. there. That's, yep. uh, that, looks, that looks like a really nice one. It, it, it is. And it's being operated as a very nice restaurant. And uh, yeah, and a lot of people stop by. And I think that's the thing that really surprised me is what an international attraction still mm-hmm. is you know mm-hmm. our adventure lab would take you to some obscure places uh but when i was going or we were going to places that were well known um there would be four or five other people there many of them speaking either a foreign language or speaking with an ac- american with an accent that lets you know that they were from a different country and uh it really is an international treasure that uh, that I hope continues to survive. Yeah. So Scott, um, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about some you know pro tips you might have for uh, for folks who who want to you know they're they're new to it and they want to tackle it. But if somebody you know anybody who you regardless of their experience level, if someone was like, all right, uh, you've motivated me, I want to take this on. What would be sort of the high level overall advice you would have for people who uh, who want to follow in your footsteps there? I, this isn't in the show notes, but it's really a, but it's really a, a great hint. Go to that spreadsheet and click on each one of those and it'll bring up a page that has a QR code on it. Print all of those out, put them in a notebook in the proper order. And that's a very quick way to be able to load your next adventure. Ah. Um, yeah, because if you get like in Oklahoma City, yeah, despite the fact that we have graphics and it's even in a list, it's hard to pick them out. Or it's easy to pick them out in a list, mm-hmm. but you're going through a whole lot of them. If you have that printed out in order, you can go from one to the other to the other. Um, Good tip. And then uh, I guess another one, again, not in the show notes, there's, there are sections of Route 66 that don't have internet access, um, and that's a challenge. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully someday uh, 
it's it's the most requested feature for Adventure Labs. Could you please let us so that we can do them offline, like we can mm-hmm. geocaching. Mm-hmm. If they would let us be able to do them offline, and we would not need to have an internet access, it would be a lot easier. Uh, so I basically had two phones, and 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 that way, if I accidentally answered a question and it wasn't able to get to the server, and I was now locked out of the app. I could go to the other phone and uh, and continue on my way. And my my rule was don't answer any questions unless I have three bars of 4G or 5G, and don't answer any question if I don't have it on two devices. But mm. uh, okay, but <clears throat> beyond that, going to the show notes, I did it my way. You should do it your way. You do you. I did me. If you're into the numbers and you want, mm-hmm. you know, 844 adventures fairly quickly, you can you can get them. Uh, or if you're looking for the experience like I did, and and especially if you have unlimited time, yeah, <laughs> good for you and enjoy month mm-hmm. a month of doing Route 66. But at a minimum, at a minimum, use that read to be feature that's in the uh, app now. Mm-hmm. And and let that read to you the initial description instead of hitting start. Read the initial description and then read all of the locations. You know, geocaching. Many people will say geocaching takes you to the best places. Adventure Labs take you to the best places, and they teach you something about it if you'll read the description mm-hmm. and take in the information that they're good that they've that they're allowing you to that they're presenting for you. And uh, yeah. Definitely do that. Go ahead, Chris. I, you were gonna uh, say- I was going to say, fear the tubas. As I said, Scott, I love the way you described the process. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And okay. This so this was kind of like a revelation I had. I was doing uh, Fu Manchu's uh, one in uh, in Flagstaff, and it took me to a mansion. Mm-hmm. And it's telling me about the architecture of the mansion. It's telling me about the history of the mansion. It's having me look at the mansion and counting windows or something along those lines. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you know, if this was a geocache, I'd be over there by the split ray fence looking for a a bison tube or a pill bottle. So, and that's, you know, that's why our muggles' wives Mm -hmm. can enjoy these, even if they don't enjoy looking for pill bottles and split ray fences. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So... Uh, what did did the uh, camper van help or hinder? Do you think it was it was a good choice to do that to to have your your hotel room on wheels? I, it would have been a better choice if I'd been twenty years younger. <laughs> <laughs> it it worked out fine. I I did spend more than half the nights in the camper van, mm-hmm. uh, but you know it was a camper van in which I was crawling into bed in the back. Uh, for a couple of days, I had some little leg cramp issues, and uh, that kind of cut into the enjoyment of uh, it. But uh, yeah, but it worked out. It, you know, it worked out. It, it gave me an economic way to stay. Um, you know, I I stayed. I think my favorite place to stay was truck stops. <laughs> yeah, truck stops because they know that you're camping. Nobody's going to bother you uh, at night. You can go brush your teeth and other things in a nice clean restroom in the mm-hmm. morning you can wake up and brush your teeth and other things in a nice clean restroom so uh so those worked out well but i also stayed in some uh forest service campgrounds i did stay two nights in uh in an old rustic uh you know route 66 motel i did stay one night at a casino <laughs> uh because they have good rates and uh yeah, and clean beds. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, but it, it did work out. Would I do it again in a camper van? I would consider it, um, but I might think of some. I might think of some other way to do it, and maybe <laughs> maybe something other than just a camper van. Mm-hmm. But but it worked out okay. We have a lot of questions or a lot of comments here. Okay. Uh, CRS ninety eight says <clears throat> there was a lot of kitsch and abandoned stuff on the section I visited. It was all fascinating. Yeah. You know, speaking of Route 66 and mm-hmm. yeah, and and some of the people like the the, the section that I t- that I created from uh, uh, twin guns, two guns to Flagstaff. Mm-hmm. 
there was this old abandoned house and uh you know nothing special but the research that was done that house in three different ins five people were killed in that house i think uh, i did that one yeah yeah you you probably did it was right next to flagstaff yeah mm -hmm. so what did you think chris that I, kind of you, like <laughs> you read the first one you go wow that's a tragedy wait a minute what it goes on <laughs> and there's another <laughs> I remember reading it. I don't remember if I read it out loud to my wife or she read it out loud to me as one of us were driving. It was like, are you kidding? How can this be? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. And without an adventure lab, you know, that, mm -hmm. that is not one of the hot oh. spots for people coming. I would have Europe driven to by at 70 miles an hour going, huh? Wonder what that was. And off I yeah. go. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That, that section of Route 66, I remember it well. Every crack, you know, there were long cracks in the pavement and grass coming up through it, at least a foot tall, right? Nature yeah. is in the process of recovering this road, but it's a frontage road, you know? Yeah, you, I felt fine doing about 45. I didn't want to do much more than that on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was thinking, I go, okay, so if this is, I, I realize the condition of the road is not as good as it was when it was first built, but... This is about the speed they were traveling. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, this is a long trip to go it, anywhere. It, it is a long trip. And when you get on those sections that are really the original mm -hmm. Route 66, they're only about eight feet wide. They're narrow. <laughs> yeah. They are narrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, as I was talking to Jim, um, if you're in a long line of cars and one of them slow or you're following a truck, you know that it does, it's not like today's trucks that travel very quickly <laughs> yeah uh, you, you're it's a, it's a long trip yeah, yeah. uh the abandons i'm trying to remember that one but uh yeah yeah crs 98 said my spot was the my favorite spot was the abandoned zoo yeah well gsm times two thank you so much for coming on and talking about this this i we could go another hour talking about just the special parts of um Route 66. There is one question I want to ask before we go, and this is from Fear the Tube. Is he says it's a Canadian question. Is Route 66 something one could do in winter? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do it in winter. Uh, well, I, actually, with, I shouldn't say that. I, I, yeah, with, I would probably do it in fall. Uh, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of elevation, but yes, as you get up towards Chicago and southern yeah. Illinois, you are going to run in snow. Um, you know, south of that, uh, it's it's going to be okay. There's very little elevation gain except around Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. So in the winter, uh, you could encounter some snow around Flagstaff. Yeah. Kansas, Missouri, they can have some serious, you know, storms go through them. <laughs> they can, yeah. So you can. I would pack and, you know, just be careful. We could do a whole show on being prepared for Route 66. In the winter. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How to, how to survive it. So, but it can be, it could be done in the winter and certainly during the fall. Mm -hmm. Well, once again, thank you so much. Uh, you know, we look forward to having you on to talk about something else. Um, you know, all the questions that you you get when you're on here, it just tells me how much people love you. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I appreciate being an ambassador for geo, geo, geocaching. All right. Well, something we appreciate is uh, our patrons and everybody who supports them. Maybe as we wrap up here, um, a thanks to Land Sharks and Cashly, our corporate Denali level sponsors. Uh, Landsharks.ca is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. And Cashly is the geocaching app for iOS. Check them out at cashly.com. And we want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters, of course, Land Sharks and Cashly, but also Cool Cow Cashers and Hawaiian Mile. If you want to know more about supporting this podcast, well, click that Patreon link right over there on the cachingnw.com website. That's right. Just like Genies did. And Trexer, who's in the chat. And Subway Mark, who led off the chat. Yeah. And M Nerve. And J Carr. Peach of Washington. CRS 98. And Limax, who's also in the chat. And also in the chat and on the video, GSM times two. <laughs> hey, let's see. How about uh, GeoNav Pro? And Acker Doc. Just Carlo. 
Terrible Tease. And Teus. B Pendragon. Cores has got. Railroad. LG 9000. Gas Station Tuna. Geocaches. Log Work. The Camp Clan. Green Words. Butterfly Girl. Kid Vegas 19. Sky Hawker. You Talks to Rocks. MC3 Cats. Seaback Tribe. Dora Moore. You, Dak. Just Finding Our Way. Flagman. Mountain Bike. Boomer 365. Geo Birder. Team Noltex. BC Rock Crawler. And last but certainly not least, Whidbey Island Gal. And Scott, you alluded to it already, but if people wanted to reach out to you, we, you mentioned they can go to route66al.net for information about the Adventure Lab and to reach you. GSM X2 on the geocaching message board. I I just love that as a communication method. It is, it's a good one. They, they designed yeah. that well. Yes, yeah. they did. It's becoming ubiquitous. Yes. And folks, thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode of Caching in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. So if you like the show, please click the Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. And if you didn't like the show, I say it almost every week. I don't know how you couldn't. Uh, <laughs> let us know what you want us to talk about. But if you like the vibe, please subscribe wherever you get your podcast and leave us a review. Because if you were in a restaurant, you would tip. If you were in a live audience, you would clap. But since you're on a podcast, leave us a free, fast, fabulous, fantastic five-star review. Of course, you can call in, like, you know, our caller tonight. Call in to 253-693-TFTC and leave us a comment, ask us a question, or help us update our BIOS any time of the day or night. And of course, especially 9 p.m. on Thursdays. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show and chat. The show is produced by Chris Umfenauer, Jim Paul Woods, Jay Kennedy, and Brian Lane. It's licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license, copyright 2024 by Chris Umfenauer. And folks, I ask you to stay tuned for the after show. Well, let's see. Keith says that uh, Adventure Labs are an incredible tour guide and geocaching for that matter. Mm -hmm. takes you to some great spots seems like somebody has a youtube channel set up with that is their theme Funny. somebody does <laughs> hmm. you know in case you were wondering about that particular youtube channel very nice segue there the first episode this is from keats 94 the first episode of my morocco series goes live saturday uh chef Chowan, sure Blue City, yeah is the town in the rift mountains that's where you just, you know, get out and play something mm -hmm. in the north of the country. I found my first African geocache there. Nice. And what else? Uh, Keats also says geocaching is more than getting out or is, is more than signing a logbook or getting an AL stage. Yeah. How very true. Oops. Let's see. What else do we have? Starcacher has a couple of things. This morning, my virtual rewards geocache was published. It's Toledo Art Museum. And then, oh, that was a fatass. This one's a fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then this afternoon, what, what's he trying to say? Why it's am I the one reading this? It's for after the show. Okay. <laughs> uh, then this afternoon, I published my first Adventure Lab series, highlighting five of my favorite sculptures on the grounds of the museum. I have that AL credit since early 2020. Oh, well, now they're much easier to get. Good to use that up. Mm hmm. Uh, what else we got here? Is that about it? Uh, caching cans is, whoops, it moved. There it is. Caching cans is excited. It's less than 40 hours away. The Halloween extra extravaganza. Yeah. Uh, that's GC, Alpha, Whiskey, Charlie, Four, Papa. Yeah. G cock, C four P. That's not how I spell cock. There's an L in it somewhere. Caw, caw. Mm, yeah, that's it. Oh, let's see. Uh, Chris, could I uh, share something real quick? Oh, please. Of course. Anytime. You're the guest. <laughs> please be the guest. Uh, let's see. I don't have where my chat go. Oh. I know. I, I know the exact problem you're facing. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Okay. What I'm going to share, uh, maybe someone will type this in. GC Alpha Juliet Foxtrot Kilo charlie that's my my virtual reward mm -hmm. and it's at the intersection of lincoln highway and route six wow. wow yeah so it's uh it's it was fun i casey and 11 and i uh met there uh took a picture 
went over to our classic uh, Route 66 ice cream place, shared some ice cream. And that night I'm like, I know where I'm going to use my uh, Route 66 uh, sure now. Virtual. Was, was it, oh, it was a virtual reward, right? It's a virtual reward. Yes. That's, that's historic because those are two of the very early freeways. Mm -hmm. Lincoln being the earliest. Uh, Lincoln actually might have been the first highway. As I right. say, it's for the first mapped highway because mm -hmm. when it was declared a highway, it was going through fields and <laughs> ruts and uh, yeah, no pavement or I, no, pa not much pavement except in the cities and not much pavement uh, west of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fun. I yeah. saw that we had uh, a new listener that jumped in tonight. Wanted to know, is this stream about geocaching? And then <laughs> asked several questions and our great listeners answered them. You sure did. That was great. That was, yeah, that was really good to see. So guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. You are great ambassadors to the sport and mega blocks. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Um, the, oops, the GPX and link files on the website. That's root 66 al.net. Uh, are great to have for sections without cell service. Are are those sections well labeled that you know ahead of time you need this? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, they talk about it pretty mm -hmm. well that you don't need it. And uh, the two sections that are the most difficult are from the California Arizona border um, to um, not needles. Um, yeah, the the first big town in Arizona. Barstow or Kingman? Kingman, yeah, yeah. to Kingman, yeah. Interesting sections, but uh, yeah, essentially no self-service um, <laughs> along the way. Go. Some of them are well labeled. <laughs> if you take the time to read the description before you leave self-service. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice. And and you've done a show with us uh, probably over a year ago on how to do adventure labs without self-service. And that uh, all of that information is now worthless. Oh no! Do we need yeah. to do another? Uh, you know, essentially now, uh, yeah. Essentially, the information that was presented there uh, is not usable. Uh, the advice I would give now is: don't answer the questions unless you have. And I'm just going to say f either five five G service or have it on two device have mm -hmm. the it on two devices. Uh, because now, if it, if you answer it and it can't get up to the server you're you're done mm -hmm. it, it's almost it's almost as sequential hmm. so ignore I, ignore all that advice it was I did an adventure lab not too long ago and didn't have good cell service and you know you, i i didn't realize it and it was a multi uh multi answer one mm -hmm. multi choice and i hit it and it says you can't an you can't give the right answer until you get into cell phone range Oh, that must be the right answer. Okay. <laughs> it, it is. And now you have, then you would have to exit to get into yep. cell phone range where before you could, okay, that's, that's not the right answer. I just, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you stay in the adventure lab. Uh, but uh, that advice is not, is not relevant anymore. Hmm. So if GCHQ is listening and your most requested uh, feature <laughs> for Adventure Labs is offline. An offline mode. It yeah. sure would be nice to be able to do that. Yeah, just have that Adventure Lab open. Then you can drive through all the locations. Yep. When you get back to cell, then you can answer or cell coverage and you can answer the questions. Yeah. Or yeah. Maybe, maybe exactly. staying in one of those Keech uh, hotel rooms. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. You know, the same way that you can do, it, you know, geocaching. You can mm -hmm. do geocaching, and you're right. You can't you can you log, can't log it. You cannot mm -hmm. log uh, yeah. if you don't have cell coverage. Just make it so that we know that the correct answer is. We get cell coverage. We can then mm -hmm. answer yeah. it for credit. Please. There you have it. Well, GSM Times 2, thank you once again. Yes. And folks, thanks for tuning in. And until next week, go out on a road trip and get caching in the Northwest.